Welcome to Backtrack. This is our separate, uh, still part of the podcasting, but this is like a little break between the big stories and the big month recap where we discuss a single topic, usually a news story we were able to cover, or more often the games that we've just been playing and having a good F, good time and just talking. Uh, so this time we're going to be talking about some news stories that we did not cover in the last podcast that I feel like we should talk about. Uh, okay. I'm going to give you a choice. Which do you want to talk about first? PlayStation play, State of Play that just happened. Or ESA, the company that does the E3, mm-hmm. turning it into a festival. Uh, let's do ESA E3. Okay. It's exactly as it sounds. They're okay. trying to turn it into more of a festival, like via game, uh, GameDaily.biz. They, uh, apparently, there was a leaked PowerPoint. Mm-hmm. Where it shows they're trying to turn into a festival, and I just remember seeing on Twitter a lot of people were like, "Oh, they're they're going fire festival." Route. That's what I was thinking. Fire festival, okay. like right now. Is that what you're thinking? Yep. Oh, dude, it's it's worse because some of the stuff that's on the uh, PowerPoint that got leaked is just really like it has a very corporate attitude to it. Mm-hmm. So here's a slide: the power of social good. Okay. Yeah. And you and me have sat through business meetings. We know when there's some kind of, huh, that's BS. Yep. That's a, that's, what's a nicer word for then that BS? Uh, malarkey. Yeah. That's, that's malarkey. That's, malarkey is a weird word, but glad you chose that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's malarkey. Um, so power of social good. Bullet point one. Research shows that millennials and Gen Z are the most giving back slash social good, quotation marks on those two, generations ever. By amplifying E3's social good brand, we can advance the industry's brand with consumers while storing positive chits, C-H-I-T-S, for future use, e.g. policy goals, next negative video game story. Bullet point three. You, you have. You look like you have something to say. I'm just. I don't know. I'm just. They're, they're desperately trying to. Uh, it feels like they're desperately trying to find a holding on something because E3 has been kind of going downhill. Yeah, that's what everyone is kind of saying. Like at least news wise. Yeah. Because like, I listen to a good amount of podcasts. A lot of them. A. They're not happy with the ESA because of the lines are getting so long. The press industry days are getting annoying. The. Uh, not only that, they leaked the info of press people. Like, yeah, they had oh. the, the info leaked. Like, oh. apparently there was a document that had, like, a, a spreadsheet of people's personal information, phone numbers, addresses. Oh, that's... Something no. like that, yeah. That's no bueno. With their names and stuff. So it's like, according to, uh, if I remember, Patrick Klepek, mm-hmm. he was from uh, Waypoint dot, or Vice.Games now, or whatever mm-hmm. they call in their subdivision. Okay. He was, like, getting phone calls all the time after that for a while. That sucks. Yeah, he's, uh, like, Waypoint is one of those more um, liberal uh, kind of, like, they definitely feel more LGBT friendly. Okay. And more, like, in that kind of mindset. And um, it's one where it's like, okay, yeah, I can see how you would make enemies if you're calling someone's behavior out because they do mm-hmm. do that. And then if that person has people that back them and stuff like that you know just that kind of uh audience Mm -hmm. that would be angry at them so yeah that happened too third bullet point oh god (laughs) just the oh god is so uh you're not gonna be going bye at the end of this you're gonna go oh lord bye yeah (laughs) yeah um one tactic we can implement is partnering with influencers celebrities, athletes, YouTube personalities who are passionate about E3 relevant social good efforts, e.g. gender equality, STEM. Bullet point four. Imagine an NBA champion global superstar participating in an E3 Coliseum conversation and slash or Global movie star being part of the E3 digital ticket because it included social good components. I mean, but they they already have 
Star. They already have stuff like this. They just have Keanu Reeves in the last one. Like, what are you... What is the ESA talk? I feel like the ESA is now saying, like, okay, we're not... I feel like those are people that, like... It made sense to get Keanu Reeves. He's in the game. Yeah. People like it. Like, Keanu Reeves is basically kind of on top of the world right now. Like, yeah. he's... It's gonna be, like, a big story if he does something wrong, you know? Yeah. You know? But so far, it seems like... There's a whole subreddit about like how humble he is and how much he is of that. So it made sense. Like, okay, we're going to get Keanu on stage. He's going to go. And yeah, it turned out to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. This seems more like for the E3 itself. Like, hey, I'm... Uh, give me a basketball player who's not in uh, hot water right now. Uh, Steph Curry. Hi, I'm Steph Curry. Uh, and I'm partnering Steph Curry or Curry? Curry. Curry. I'm Steph Curry, partner. I don't know basketball. Don't That's throw right. that. Steph Curry. I'm is, yeah, I was trying to think, like, who is not under fire right now? Yeah. Uh, I'm Steph Curry, partnering with E3 to do, uh, like, LGBT positive stuff or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's what that feels like. But even when we have people on stage, especially, like, the... EA, you know, where they always have some kind of football star or soccer star coming out to uh, showcase, oh, hey, here's, you know, the new FIFA or whatever. Mm -hmm. These guys, uh, at least the, in their words, the millennials and Gen Z who really care about video games don't care for that. Like, they're bringing... Uh, EA is smart because they're bringing people in that field to do that game because mm -hmm. that's the people for people for sports. Mm -hmm. They know that's the audience. That's what they're going to do. Like, they know, I'm pretty sure they know anyone who doesn't care about this is already on their phone checking something. Mm -hmm. You know? This one feels more like, hey, we're going to partner up. It's it's like, um, uh, what's uh, the LGBT month? Pride month? Uh, mm -hmm. When corporations are just like, Hey, we care for it and put rainbows on their stuff, but oh, yeah, you can tell there's like, no. Yeah, you, they don't really you, care. You they're really just trying care. to. They're just jumping on the bandwagon to try to get some people on their side, and then as soon as the month is over, it's like, oh yeah, whatever, we forgot about it. Yeah, it's not like it's not like they're like we're gonna donate like half of these profits to profits to the Trevor Foundation or something. No, they're just like pride. Yeah, they're just oh look we're part of it too aren't we cool like you guys yeah yeah you like us and and that's what it feels like the esa is doing yeah. with e3 and it's like are you serious right now yeah i don't think the strategy is gonna work and like i said they're already on the way out everyone kind of prefers the um, the whole mechanic of just people putting their own like direct like nintendo has been doing even playstation with the whole state of play which we'll get into that because that actually had mixed view uh like mixed feelings about the recent one the which one uh, the recent one, which was like Last of Us Two news. Oh, the PlayStation one. Yeah, I, I didn't watch it. Yeah, so, so that, that it was mixed, re mixed feelings on it, mm -hmm. like, but yeah, like people like that, but I also feel like some people are also liking like either give us a direct that means something, mm -hmm. or you know, like I think the one of the big things was PlayStation going out of E three. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know if they're gonna come back in this year, this coming year for uh ps5 or whatever yeah or if they're gonna hold their own psx or something like that and that's the like, thing i mean they already have their own convention yeah or, or they have their own expo and even like i said just nintendo like anything direct like just put up a video online do a live stream mm -hmm. and it can be a little more edited it can be a little more it can go smoother even because honestly the face a lot of those uh times they, they get on stage and they try to talk about game it comes out awkward and clunky and it's like it's better when you can even edit it and no one cares about the expo anymore they just want to get the news and these companies are spending all this money to this huge shebang just to announce something when it's easier just to put a video i don't know e3 just doesn't make sense anymore it used to be a it used to make sense because it was a way you know before the internet was really in its mm -hmm. in its heyday or like how it is right now it's its development um yeah but even when the internet was coming out it still made sense because it was like Oh, this is this is the time to get on G4 TV to mm -hmm. watch all they're doing with X Play, yeah, yeah, yeah. to watch game trailers, see their kind of reactions. Well, yeah, and the, the well the other thing the, the or the other reason is like E three started off as a um, what what do you call that um, press conference industry event. It wasn't a press conference. It was hosted for retailers so they can see what things they can stock oh, on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh there's a name for it, but I can't remember right now. Yeah, distributing distributor something. Yeah, it yeah. was literally just meant. 
it was just a way for companies like Sony and Nintendo to show companies or stores like Nintendo or Walmart or Best Buy or GameStop, look, there's a new thing never coming on. You want to buy all this, you know, consoles, you know, that we're coming out with so you can put them in your stores and sell them. You know, that's what we're going to be doing. And that's all it was, a trade show. That's what it was. Yeah. It was a trade show. And um, then it became a whole thing where like, okay, yeah, news outlets, or like video game news outlets would go in there and... Uh, Report on what they report, see. Report, and, and then like, like, people would see them in their magazines and stuff, and that's how you got it. It's like, oh, that's cool. But at this point, like, it doesn't matter. Like, the news are always coming out, like, on yeah. social media, on videos, on... Like, you know, I have an RSS feed with news just so I can keep up with it. Yeah. You know? So you don't need a big thing like that. And companies like Nintendo and Sony are finding out, like, dude, they, they're spending so much money to put this whole show that doesn't necessarily make or break the game mm -hmm. when they can just make their own edited videos, save a lot of money, and people are still going to be excited and hyped about it. Well, I have mixed feelings on that because it's also like, to me, it kind of feels like, yeah, it's correct. A lot of people will enjoy State of, Direct, uh, State of Play or Nintendo Direct or the mixed State of Direct, as I just accidentally called it. But I also feel like there is something special and I think memorable about watching E3. Like yeah, Microsoft. Like everyone together going. Like, no, just like even Microsoft. Mm -hmm. You know, this year, like, usually I hear, like, Microsoft was like, eh, you mm -hmm. know? But this year, a lot of people still talk about Keanu Reeves. They still talk about that spooky girl from uh, Bethesda, even though Bethesda had a lot of fire to clean up on that. I didn't even watch the Bethesda portion. Yeah, no. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, I think if a company, because it's like, yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. Will it do pretty well for them? That's debatable. Like, I, I'm not one behind the scenes, but I feel like, you know, yeah, we're still talking about Keanu Reeves. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, why he come out? Oh, yeah, Cyberpunk 2020. We mm -hmm. still remember that. It's like, okay. Like, True. But I, I feel like they would have, a, if they had done a video, but same thing, like announcement, yeah, showed... you know, and not just putting, like, a trailer for the game. But like I said, Nintendo Direct still has that feeling of, uh, for me at least personally, Nintendo, like a Nintendo Direct still has a feeling of like an event because they'll put it out like, oh, you know, tune in next week at this time to watch the Nintendo Direct and then we'll be watching a live stream and everyone's in the chat and everyone's hyped. If they had done something even similar with that with like Keanu Reeves, people but would have still gotten excited about I, it. I think not to the level, like not to the meme level that we have now. You know, we have, like, if they put out that trailer for Cyberpunk, a lot of people will be like, oh yeah, holy crap, Keanu's mm -hmm. in it, you mm -hmm. know? But then he comes out on stage, you know, mm -hmm. and then he's like, you're beautiful to someone random. Like, you're that's breathtaking. Not a, you're breathtaking. You're, that's not a moment you can, like, fake there. That's not a moment True. you can do. That's something that happens on the stage. And that's something that was like, okay, that makes at least this moment yeah. memorable. I feel like, I mean, I feel like they could have accomplished the same or something similar by just having him not only in the trailer, but also, like, speaking to the camera on, you know, on, on a live stream or something i think it would have still had a huge effect of people going crazy about it yeah you wouldn't have the whole meme of like oh you know you're breathtaking and all that mm -hmm. my problem is like there's been so many times when you get this people on stage not in the case of keanu reeves but either people working on the game that they're not used to being on stage they're not oh, used to yeah. everything, and they come off super awkward and clunky and like it just feels like cringy and then also you get a lot of times Famous it? people. 2007 with Sean White came out one time. It wasn't that great. And then there was the kids at Xbox. Like, I remember that one. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. Like, things like that happen. Or you get famous people, like either sports or actors or whatever, going on stage talking about something that they, they were just paid to talk about and they maybe don't necessarily care or know about. So you get both. You get the people that are comfortable talking on stage, but they don't. It doesn't feel like they know what they're talking about. And the people that know what they're talking about, but they do not know how to address people and they come off really awkward. Well, but then with an edited video and edited like live stream that you're just putting out, you can really like clean it up and hit all the marks a little stronger. Yeah, though there are some times where like there's, and I'm kind of playing devil's advocate on this one a little bit. There yeah. are times where you have People come out and a lot of people notice that, oh yeah, they're not for it. Uh, what was the game? Uh, Yarny. Yarny. The guy came out for EA uh, Indies. He was like one of the first ones. Everyone saw it and everyone, at least the people I'm familiar with and I follow, mm. were like, dude, look at this guy. I want to play his games because he just came out. He didn't know, he, like, he is super nervous. You could see his handshake and everything. Mm -hmm. like, everyone's like, he's just talking passionately. I want to get in on this, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have people like, 
they didn't put him on stage this year, which is probably a good idea. Joseph Yaris, the guy from uh, the Game Awards, who okay. said, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah F- the Oscars, F- yeah, yeah, F the Oscars, yeah, or screw the Oscars, yeah, yeah. Now, at this point, just go for it. F the Oscars, yeah. Um, yeah, like you don't get people like them out on stage. They're passionate, and mm-hmm. you can tell, you know. I, I, I want Joseph more on stage because he does seem like he's very passionate about the games he's making. Like, get, get him to talk about it, you know? Fair enough. Uh, which, I forgot slide two. Okay. The second slide that was pretty big, the leak. Paid media partnerships. Oh, of course. Create paid, bullet point one, create paid media partnerships with major outlets that exponentially increase the reach of E3 and its exhibitors. Here's the part, second part. Enable ESA to control content and the message. Ooh. Part bullet three, the three quinine. CNBC Tech Impact was a proof of concept that enabled ESA to build the show, own the content, and distribute it nationally. So they're going to be controlling the content that comes out? They, they, I, or is that what, what they're it, trying to like, say? Yeah, it's one of those weird ones where it's like, paid media partnerships feels like one of those things where it's like, okay, uh, what is this called? It's a type of reporting that is done based on the person. So it's like uh, native advertising is what it's called. It's when it's, it looks like a legit news story, but it's actually backed by a company and it kind of is like an ad more than a news story. And it has been done before. Um, uh, just like looking that up and that's a whole thing where it's like, oh yeah, this doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. You know, where it's like with the media, you want an unbiased opinion. You know, you want um, like Destructoid, game, like even GameDaily.biz to be not partnered with a company and saying, oh yeah, no, they're fine. And then there's something about the leaks and they have to come be like, no, those guys, it wasn't their fault or something like that. You want the media to be genuine. And even with like paid part, it feels like one of those, hey, influencers, YouTubers or stuff like that. You can come to E3, but here's the stuff you cannot say about E3, you know? And that's what that feels like. Yeah, I don't like that. The only thing that I still like in like about like E3 or any of those expos is that actual people get to play games before they come out. And the thing is that they don't get to talk about it. They don't get to show it. But well, actually, yeah. no, they don't get to do details about it and they get to show They don't get to show it, but at least they get to tell you like, oh, it actually plays kind of what they said it would play. Mm-hmm. Because I enjoy that because that gives me hope because uh, I'm very skeptical of uh, any trailer, gameplay trailer or cinematic trailer. I don't trust them. They're always yeah. heavily edited and heavily like. The worst tailored. part about this is like the more I hear about ESA and E3, the more I kind of don't want to go. Like mm-hmm. when we were first conceptually nice this, we were talking to our buddy Adrian, uh, who's not here because he's sore about Smash. Um, that, yo, would it be cool if we went to E3? Mm-hmm. And Adrian was all for that to like get a crew to like, hey, if we're gonna do some journalism, do some yeah, do some coverage, go to E3, get like four or five of us cameras and stuff, go cover, come Mm -hmm. back, talk about it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he was all down for that. And now that like, we didn't go last year and he was like, ah, you should have told me we should have like tried, you know, because I've seen people try and they surprisingly get it Mm -hmm. because ESA is down in numbers. But at the same time, uh, the ESA, um, giving out personal information and stuff like that. That's not something I want. That's sketchy. Yeah, I don't want information. Controlling the media is kind of like even iffy for me. I get like I understand when a game developer comes and says, hey, this game's in beta. Hey, this game has some quirks. You know, mm-hmm. if you talk about this, like just realize it's not the final product, mm-hmm. you know, or it's even like, hey, can you just... They also control their demos, you know, so they're not going to show like dungeon 2 if they don't want to show Mm -hmm. dungeon 2 so you know that's fine but esa controlling what we say about e3 and stuff like that it's like ah no i i don't like that yeah and uh speak earlier we mentioned state of play we're just going to jump into that real quick there was a recent state of play um about a while back there wasn't much um, and this is why, like I told you, I got mixed reviews mm-hmm. because some people were, it's 20 minutes. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. Somewhere around that. 
And uh, not much. They revealed a new game by the guys who did um, Tetris Effect called Humanity. They didn't showcase really anything. Uh, it's, but it is coming to PS4 with uh, PS4 VR support. Okay. Then they had some new reveals and um, some updates on games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Warfare. They shadow dropped uh, the mid- medieval game, like the demo at least. Okay. They say Civilization Six is coming to P- Excuse me. Civilization Six is coming to PS4, and then they showed a game called The Rise: A Simple Story, which actually looked good. Then they jumped into the PlayStation Plus lineup of mm-hmm. October, which is this month, hopefully by the time this comes out, which is Last of Us Remastered and MLB The Show 19. And then a new Death Stranding PS4 exclusive, uh, like PS4 kind of uh, PlayStation console. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Console, um, what is that called? Limited edition PS4 console. Mm-hmm. And after that, it was just a sneak peek on, a, well, not a sneak peek, a new trailer for Last of Us Part 2. Okay. And that was it. Okay. Yeah. So, in in general, like, that's not that much, you know? It's not. But, I mean, it depends. Do we know? Are they going to make more than one a year? How many? Well, so far they've made... This is their third. Okay. Yeah. And this one was... I will agree was the more lackluster of them. Because, yeah, Final Fantasy VII was, the, like, the last one. Mm-hmm. And that one just dropped some big info, like the release date and stuff. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people were already waiting for that. Mm-hmm. And then Last of Us Two. I don't think it has as wide of an audience as Final Fantasy. But a lot of people were like, okay, cool, we got the release date. But then when you look at the overall thing, it was like, eh? You know, like, Nintendo Direct, when they do a Nintendo Direct... They'll do it for something they really care about, like a Pokemon, you know? Yeah. It'll be a good 30 minutes of Pokemon. Yeah. You know? Or Splatoon. 30 minutes of Splatoon. They'll yeah. really push the game. Yeah. If they haven't intended to uh, direct about Switch, they'll at least have... It'll be a little longer, and I think they'll have, like, some content that's, like, pretty big there. Like, some big games that you've been waiting for, or at least some news about some game. Like, the next Nintendo Direct, I'm... Ex- I'm Hoping it drops about like Animal Crossing or about the new Metroid or something like that. You I know? would love for the new Metroid. Yeah. But this one, it was just like, eh, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like even with Nintendo Directs, like they can't all be, you know, amazing. And I feel like not all of them have been, have, have like blown me away. Uh, I didn't watch the state of play. But I mean, it seems like, it seems like they, they did drop some cool stuff. And I mean, if they talked about Last of Us, how long did they talk about Last of Us? Was it just the one it, trailer? It was just the trailer. Because they don't they don't have any personality or anything like that, like how Nintendo has their guys or any yeah. developers. It's just like the voice, the ethereal voice of like, next up, check out the state of... Next up in Sony's state of play, check out this new trailer from the Naughty Dog guys, Last of Us Part 2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But more female and sounding way better and more scripted. Oh, sure. Yeah. Not as good looking, but, you know, no, probably better good looking than, <laughs> than me. Um, that's not a hard buy. Hard, high bar at all. Um, and can speak English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, it, there's no voice. There's no nothing after the trailer was like, like, wasn't that a great look? Thanks for watching Sony's State of Play. See they you gotta next work time. It out. Yeah, because I got to say, like, yeah, the Nintendo Directs are just so charming. Just the whole narrative. Uh, I personally like the Smash ones that they're talking about. You know, and you have a uh, Sakurai mm-hmm. showing you the game himself. It's like, it's neat. It's kind of like as if he was on stage showing you something, but it's just on a video. And it's yeah, and charming. like when he goes, you hook, you know, in Banjo Kazooie, when yep. he's just showing the game, it's like, oh. Oh, it's super charming. Yeah, it's like, cool. My like, favorite thing of that last Nintendo Direct was when he. On the Nintendo Direct goes like, you guys should really play, uh, should buy an Xbox and play Banjo. And it's, it, you could tell it wasn't like he was getting paid or anything. He was just like, legit was like, it's a cool game and you guys should play it. Sadly, it's not on Nintendo, but get an Xbox and play it. And he, and there, even he was like, you know, yeah. I think that was super charming, like very humbling. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, they really, do, they have to work on it because it feels, say to play feels more corporate Like it feels a little bit more like you could just really put all these out. Like, you don't need a state of play, kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, just, you know, just like put out the trailers and be done with it kind of thing. Yeah. Well, Nintendo Direct, they have gone to the part where they feel like it's definitely like a personality base where it's like, oh, hey, here's this. Ta-da. You yeah. know, and it's like, hey, we have Sakura. We have these guys. Yeah. It's we, a lot more charming. You know, yeah. But, yeah, so that's 
really it? Oh, and there was a lot of like a PSVR games that were shown. It was like one of those montages. So uh, a game called Gorn, Espire 1, v- oh, VR Operative, one. After the Fall, a- L.A. Noir, the VR ca- uh, case files, and uh, Space Channel 5, Kind of Funky News Flash. Which, like, I'm, I don't have a v- uh, PSVR, so I can't really get into those. But yeah, so that was State of Play. And that was the news about the ESA. Didn't try to rhyme, but I found the time to. Um, you hate that, don't you? Only a little. Yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. If you guys have any thoughts about the ESA and E3, we'd love to hear about you. Also about State of Play, did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Let us know down in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the audio podcast. Uh, Just send us a tweet at 3G underscore collective on Twitter. Bye. I was going to re-say that. That's at 3G underscore collective on Twitter. Bye. Yeah, now see you. Okay, no, no. We'll wait, actually, just a little bit. Bye. (laughs) God damn it. I was going to fade out too. (laughs)